Gentlemen, my name is Dr. John Belkowitz. I am the Director of Research and Development at Intelligent Concrete, where we specialize in saving the world with all the concrete in it. And today we're going to talk about the handheld penetrometer. No, we're not. No, we're going to talk about one of the harsh realities of the concrete industry and how the handheld penetrometer will save the day. That's not true. That's not true. No, we are going to talk about one of the nastiest parts of the concrete industry, one of the harsh realities, um, and something that we've known about for a while, the big issue that we have with coal combustion uh, residue, or what we call Class F fly ash. Now, ASTM C618 gives us our specifications for not only Class F fly ash, but also Class C ash, and to designate the difference between the two, Class F is more pozzolanic, Class C has more calcium oxide. When you add water to class C, it will hydrate like cement. When you add water to F ash, it won't hydrate. It won't get hard. It'll stay in a jelly. Now, that F ash, with that pozzolanic material, when you add it to concrete, it will enhance the degree of cementitious hydration. Here's the thing. Now, I said there's an unfortunate reality. And fly ash has been one of the greatest materials, specifically class F, fly ash here in the Midwest to the West Coast, specifically because we have something called alkali silica reactivity with our aggregate. A lot of our rock is reactive, has that potential to create that alkali silica gel and destroy the concrete from within over short and long periods of time. And all we need is moisture and soluble earth alkali metals. Now we have that in concrete, both of those. We have the aggregate, so we have a huge problem. And this is something that we've known about for years. Back in the day, Katie Bardagy and her group at the Denver Federal Center, I think it was 2009, wrote a paper on why ASR is getting worse out here in the Midwest to the West Coast. Um, and one of the reasons that she cited was the quantity and quality, or her group cited was the quality and quantity of the coal combustion energy, uh, residue, specifically that class F fly ash that we get out here. And here is one example. Ding! What you're seeing right here is a black and white photo of coal combustion residue, specifically that class F fly ash, that was sold to a ready mix provider here in the Rocky Mountain region. Now, these products, which totally look different, even to the untrained eye, are considered to be the same product by the distributor. Now, the funny thing is, I don't know if it's really funny, but both of these products do meet the ASTM C618 specification. There's a bunch of physical and chemical property tests that we need to do, but according to the distributor, these are the same products. Now, where does that unfortunate reality come in? When you put this material on the left, uh, but the, the material on the left has a lot more residual carbon. It's a very high carbon content. And you can see that by that black appearance to it. The material on the right has a lighter gray, and if you saw it in color, it would be more beige appearance. The material on the right is a better class F fly ash. It's going to enhance our density of our concrete, reduce permeability, increase resiliency to ASR, a so whole bunch of stuff. The material on the left it's going to monopolize water, high range re water reducer, and make it difficult for our ready mix providers to generate air in the concrete. Now, this is just from one provider here in our local area, 45 minutes from where we work. Here's another picture in color, ding, where we see the same scenario. Now, this is up way up, up, up in the mountains. So I had to travel very far on Camelback. That's not true. That's not true at all. It was a really nice drive, about two hours, three hours, spent the weekend up there, got to hang out with some really good friends. But when I did hang out with my ready mix provider, they asked me, John, how do we deal with this? And we got two baggies. Both of them are considered to be the same product. And for you here, it's in beautiful uh, color to show you the material on the left is struck match black, and the material on the right is nice light gray. Both of them are considered to be the same material and both of them create a drastically different concrete. Material on the left, the fly ash on the left, creates a subpar concrete. Material on the right creates a premier awesome concrete. 
So we've got a major problem. And here in the Midwest, here in Colorado, New Mexico, Texas, Arizona, California, we can't just say, eh, what are we going to do? Such is life. Now, whether or not you believe this class F fly ash shortage or this change in fly ash is manifested from naturally current, recurring or occurring events like the development of NREL in 1978, you know, what we've been doing with renewable energy, or it's a, it's a manufactured event that's not naturally occurring, I really don't care. The end result is we're not getting the fly ash that we used to, nor are we getting the volumes. So what's the alternative? Now the alternative to this supplementary cementitious material is uh, carried out by ASTMC 1709. 1709 is for the alternative supplementary cementitious materials that would not normally conform to ASTMC 618 for fly ash, 989 for slag, and 1240 for microsilica or silica fume. And this is actually one of those products that are out there. 1709 is a guideline for an evaluation of this type of material. And this material is made by a company that I work with called Surface Tech and is one of the first alternative supplementary cementitious materials out there. And it's used to increase concrete's durability to aggressive attack like ASR. And the great thing about it is this material can be used alongside your class F fly ash to make what would be a really bad class F fly ash act like an amazing class F fly ash. And the reality is, if you don't want to make that decision today to either start using this in your mix as part of your mix or as a major part of your mix, that's fine. You don't have to do it today. But part of that unfortunate reality that I mentioned before is that eventually you're going to have to make those decisions. We don't have as much fly ash as we used to. We're going to start losing more and more of it as we go to solar energy, geothermal, on our horizon, we have nothing but wind turbines, natural gas. You're just going to have to switch. Let us know if you have any questions. This is something I'm very passionate about. I spent most of my master's and PhD working on this very topic. And I get to see what happens at Denver International uh, Airport, the T-Rex project, local highways, state highways here in Colorado, to the West Coast. So again, eventually, you're going to have to deal with this problem with the amazing solutions that are out there, why not start attacking it now? Let me know if you got any concrete questions, any concrete concerns. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We're doing this whole, if you like, subscribe, and ding the bell, you'll be entered in for a contest to win some of this, hold on, glow-in-the-dark concrete business cards, which is pretty flipping awesome. Thanks for joining us today. Go concrete! Beat asphalt!